Angel City parting ways with their now former head coach, Freya Coom. It dropped late Wednesday evening. The Athletic reporting that sources had briefed them that the decision had been made. There will be a mutual parting of ways. And then Thursday afternoon, it was made official. So, Jordan, we're talking about the breaking news. We're talking about how it's out there. I feel like in in last few episodes that you have hung out here on A3 with us, we've talked about Angel City, and we've had to preview some games. We've had to recap some performances. And they were performances that just kind of left us with more questions than anything else, you know? And it was, we, we've talked a lot about the timeline of things, how there's, you know, certain stretches and certain phases mm-hmm. of a season that, you know, teams maybe taking chunks, right? It's like, hey, how are we going to map out our first six weeks? What does it mean now that we're in the the halfway point, et cetera, et cetera? And these results that we were, well, lack of results that we were, you know, seeing for for Angel City, um, we just, again, didn't have the answers to those questions. And so I brought up a few times on here, like, well, does it, when you're in professional sports and you're not getting the results, What typically happens, unfortunately, um, is like what's considered a natural sports business decision. And you're just like, hey, it's just not working out. We've got to we've got to move on here. And we we just even kind of struggled with that because we were just kind of like, well, is that like the next move here for Angel City? What is it? What does it mean for them at this point in the halfway season? So so when we see something like this finally drop, it's official. Right. What's like your initial reaction to this kind of news? I, my initial reaction, I I was right after I had finished calling a game on Wednesday night and I was like, what is going on? You know, like, I I think it, it shocked me because it did feel like the build at Angel City was so much to do with, I mean, Freya, they got Freya really early in the process and um, got her from Gotham, was excited about what she could help build with this squad. And, um, So I I don't know. I felt like, and I think I told you this specifically, I felt like there was a real um, buy-in from Angel City to keep Freya and let her ride out this wave. But then then it didn't really surprise me. We we had talked in depth about how Angel City looked disjointed, that they didn't have sometimes a plan that was evident in how they were going to attack other teams and get results five games in a row where they were winless that one of those was a draw the rest losses and i think that was really the tipping point especially at home that game against chicago it wasn't even about how angel city played on the field it was there was no it felt like the team didn't have that x factor to say this is our home field and we have to be better here i think some of that comes from the players of course and i will always I will always take responsibility as a former player that I think they would take responsibility for themselves. But I think you have to make moves, especially the ambition of this Angel City team and organization. They have done some pretty um, aggressive things in the past. And so I I wouldn't imagine if we didn't see her fired now, I I think one more result, depending on what it was, probably would have seen her not make it through. But Uh, I just want to say Freya was amazing to work with and was so helpful on coaches calls. And um, as a broadcaster, just so appreciative of her ability to give us a little bit of insight into what she was thinking. So, um, you know, it's, it's also a person and I feel like that's hard for me too, because her life just significantly changed and we'll see how that affects the squad. That, 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 type of perspective is always so tough and difficult to, to deal with. I Listen, Freya Coom, I think, was one of our first um, kind of head coach interviews on Attacking Third. You know, yeah. I delight to chat about uh, all things Angel City. Um, she introduced the concept of the dish to us. It's a throwback to one of our earlier um, 
kind of holiday episodes as well. She talked about how her family gets together and presents a dish. It's like this massive dessert dish. Um, so yeah, like you always are like reminded of like the the human aspect of it, the and all of that behind it. Um, but I think that's the other component I think that comes out of this, right? You you see the official announcement drop from the club, but then you also see a statement from from Freya Coom as well. Like there's a a mutual expression of yeah. like, hey, good luck. You had to make a decision we have to move on from here. You know, she put on her own personal social media and she starts by thanking Angel City. She, of course, thanks the fans and she's, of course, wishes them luck um, in, in the final phase of that statement. Um, she says to the players and staff, it's been a pleasure to work with you and I wish you all the health, happiness and success for this season and everything beyond. And I really appreciate that at the top of that statement, she mentions like a little bit of like, you know, kind of the the big event of it all with her arrival to Angel City, you know, how she said that she's really happy uh, that she got to start off with them and that they show the yeah. world what happens when people properly invest in women's sports. You know, so those are important things to to note. And it doesn't seem as if it's um, like a bitter end. It, like I said, it just sort of feels like one of those kind of natural sports decision type of things that we see happen across the world of of pro athletics. It's uh mm -hmm. You have a team with big ambitions, right? As as Freya Coombe has stated in her um, in her farewell, and then you have uh, a team that's struggling to not get results, and it's kind of one of these scenes where it's like, you know, what's the definition of insanity, right? Like com continuing on in those same patterns, and if if it's not just about getting results, but also just getting losses, uh, it was just one of those things where it just sort of felt like eventually something was going to come. Um, it was bending, and eventually things were going to break. So, in terms of everything being done, dusted, and official now the look ahead, right? What what does this mean for Angel City moving forward? They've got a game coming up this weekend against San Diego Wave. It's a big one. It's going to be on CBS. It's a rivalry match. You can catch all the action kicking off at 4 p.m. Eastern. And for now, in the interim, it's going to be Becky Tweed who's going to lead this team throughout the the remainder or duration of this this regular season who knows maybe he's a shorter term it depends on how quickly i think angel city wants to go ahead and fill that that position but jordan i just sort of feel like they're not going to have a lot of trouble filling it this is going yeah. to be a very very lucrative role i no. think they're going to they're going to have people reaching out to them instead of they the probably already do. <laughs> they probably already do sandra yeah. it's going to be a role that everybody wants and i think that one of the things i noticed right away and I was talking to um Jack Yotley another broadcaster about is that it coincides with the ending of a lot of seasons in Europe and so we saw last year Juan Carlos Amaros come in in Houston mid middle of the season and really make his mark coming from Europe and can they find a, a coach not exactly like him but that kind of draw where you say hey come coach in nwsl show off a little bit of um your tactics your your building of a, a squad and we've seen what juan carlos amaros has done with those two things in gotham this year so i, I would imagine this is going to be a pretty extensive look at a lot of different coaches but everybody's going to want to be a part of angel city where they play living in LA, the organization that this is, you know, there's a reason why it's valued so high when it comes to just the worth of the club. It is a great place to be. And I think that's also why they expect you to win. They expect you to win. So um, I, I think it's not just, I'll say one more thing. It's not just the, the coach that is going to help them. I think Angel City in general needs to evaluate how they build a, a roster because I think there are some aspects where they need to get a little deeper. I constantly talk about their midfield, and I think that, that their midfield can um, be enhanced. So does that also allow them to look a little bit more into that? Because it's not just Freya who wins and loses games. It's also the yeah. team on the field.